Okay, I want to tell you about power and efficiency. They both relate to energy. Um, and so power, let's start with power. Power is the rate at which um, work is done. So power is the rate at which work is done. So um, let's see, average power would be um, work done. divided by um, delta T. It's also um, though the rate at which energy changes forms. So it's the um, so it's the amount of energy that change forms. Uh, I need to use more room here that changed forms. Put that in a big parentheses. Divide it by the time it took to change those forms. Yes, because when work is done, energy changes forms. So those are, those are equivalent. Now, um, when power, if you want instantaneous power, then um, the way we're going to write that is anytime you want an instantaneous something, then it's going to be dW dt. Or it can be dE dt for this equation. If you're wondering where I got those from, well, you, met, you know how V average is delta x over delta t? Well, V instantaneous is dx dt. Another way of saying that, it's the limit as um, delta x goes to zero, as delta t goes to zero of um, delta x over delta t. Okay, so um, let's, let's take a look then. Let's have um, the power of an object given by this equation, um, actually by this graph. So there's, there's a force that's, that is working on an object with a particular power, and we want to know how much um, force that is. Uh, or excuse me, we want to know, um, about, we're going to analyze this problem with um, this graph. Now, do you know what this area is equal to? The area underneath this graph like so many areas, the slope and the, uh, like so many graphs, the slope and the area mean something. In this graph, the area means something. Let's see, we got um, watts over seconds. Oh, let's go back here for a quick second. This is, the units for this would be joules over time seconds. So a joule over second is a watt. Okay, well, um, as you can guess then, if I multiply it, um, this dimension by that dimension, joules per second times seconds gives me energy. So the area underneath this graph is the energy that changes forms or it's the work done, one or the other, by this force. Okay, so let's say that I want to find um, the work done from two seconds to four seconds. How much work is done from two seconds to four seconds? I can just get the area underneath that graph. Well, that's the area of a trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is uh, the base times the average height. And so the area is gonna be uh, 15 watts or joules per second times two seconds. That's 30 joules. And that's 30 joules of work done, and that's also 30 joules of um, energy that change forms. Okay, now what if we have a, a slightly different problem here? What if the power is going to be, what if the power is um, changing with time? 
in a different way so that it's a little tougher to get the area. This time I want to get the the energy that's used by this, the, whatever's doing this, uh, providing this power, we're trying to get the energy of that, um, or the work done by that force, or the energy that changes forms. So, so I'm trying to find this area underneath this graph, and so to get that area, I'm going to use the integral. I want to get this area. And so um, I'm going to take the, the integral. Um, that's, let me show you why that's the case. Um, if power equals dE dt, if I bring the dt on the other side, and I integrate both sides, then when I add up all the energies, that just gives me the total energy. And that's equal to the integral of the power times um, dt, the integral of p with respect to time. This is the area underneath the p versus t graph. So if I have a p versus t graph, that's what that integral gives me, is it gives me the area underneath the graph. Okay, so back to our problem. We would like to know the area underneath that graph. Okay, so we are going to take uh, the, the energy that changes forms will equal the integral of 3 joules per second cubed times t squared times dt. And um, I'm, I want it from one second to two seconds. Notice that my boundary conditions have to be in the same unit as my differential. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take the antiderivative of this integrand right now, and so that's going to be um, t cubed, and this just turns into one joule over seconds cubed. And my boundary conditions are one second and two seconds. So when I plug into this, I first put in the two. When I put in two, this could be work done as well. When I plug in two, that's going to give me eight. So that's eight seconds cubed. So that's going to be eight joules. Now I got to put in the one minus the the other one, so when I put in the one, that gives me one joule. That's seven joules. You see how this is just taking the whole area and then subtracting the little area? What I just did was I took the whole area and I'm subtracting this little part. That little part is one joule. This whole thing is eight joules. So that's how come I get seven joules. Okay, I have one other quick thing to tell you, and that is that efficiency, I'm just going to kind of throw this out, I only have a minute left. So efficiency, whenever we talk about the efficiency of an engine or a machine, that's just going to be equal to um, work output. Divide it by work input. If we want percent efficiency, then we multiply by 100. Um, it's also, so that's one, that's one way of saying efficiency is that. We give it a lowercase e. But efficiency is also um, power output. divided by the power input. I just wanted to, to um, introduce that to you. I will tell you more about that when we actually use it. Thanks.